It says, um, now people rewriting history. 40 never had a song like why he never was uh, an archetype uh, for the new model of MCs like Redman, who was the first Buster, Eminem, Luda, Hobson, etc. The list about, uh, about to be a joke. I think that is a great assessment. I think that one thing that we, well, not we, that they are discounting Redman for is the fact that Redman created a whole lane in a similar way that Tribe created a whole lane. You know what I mean? That whole rah-rah. I mean, niggas who was coming out in 92 or around that era, they were rhyming like Redman. I remember Andre 3000 saying when he came out, he was rapping like Red Man, and probably before we heard him, but I think the uh, context of the conversation was, you know, it was a rapper at the time, I forgot his name. Damn, he, he y'all know probably in the chat, he made, uh, I don't forgot the name of the song too, uh, God's Whisper. Anyway, they were asking him about, you know, artists sounding like him and yada yada, and Dre was like, everybody sounds like somebody when they... You know what I'm saying? First start rhyming because they haven't gotten right. their style yet. And he said, when I came out, I was rhyming like Redman. And well, we can know, clearly funny... hear the Eminem, the Redman influence of Eminem. And I think for them to discount Redman in that sense, and Ludacris as well, it is a bit of a, a rewrite of history in a sense. Well, you know, it's funny that um, Andre is bringing up, you know, you know, rhyming like Redman and... um. I believe Buster Rhymes is 3000's favorite MC, or at least he used to be growing up. So yeah, he's one of them. He's a big, he's a big fan of that entertaining rah rah rah. Yep, and mm -hmm. that's all red man. Hassan Sykes with the super chat says, uh, "What y'all's take on Coast Contra? People love Coast Contra. We love Coast Contra too. I think we need to set up an interview with Coast Contra or something because I would love that. Yeah, I think that'd be dope. But yeah, we think they're dope. Uh, Matt also, Max, too. go ahead. Go ahead. I was no, just go gonna ahead. say, Matt Max says. Bet you a uh, Billboard's top five will have Andre K. Dot Lauren because uh, they're gonna push the female agenda, then throw Hove, Big, or Rock Kim to make it look good. I would like you to know, predict what the top five would be as well. I think that's a good prediction. Go ahead, Cook. You know, also, you know, let's keep in mind Redman did say, you know, fuck Billboard, I'm a bullet on my block. Wow. They're very well aware of this. Well, you know what? I know we keep saying Billboard because Billboard's posting it, but Vibe seems to be intertwined in this too. So, well, that's that, very problematic. Isn't exactly. that why all those "It was written problems" started? Didn't know the "It was written problems" start with it Vibe. It is. It is. So that's why I mentioned that. So yeah, we're not gonna <laughs> absolve Vibe of this smoke either. What I would like to uh, propose, you know, maybe the people in the chat might agree, disagree, whatever. I propose that those people who put together that list. They come on this show or uh, let's just say a neutral ground and debate that list against our list. Because I don't know well, what the people at Billboard slash Vibe talk to you guys about their list before they put this out. <clears throat> I mean, I would welcome that. But, you know, the only thing I think we got from the last challenge I issued was a uh, Wayno popping up in the comments with a bunch of like laugh emojis. Uh, we still waiting to hear back from your ass too. I mean, That's honestly, it's conversation not, for another day. It sounds like the laugh emojis. The way I take it means you know we can't debate with you guys. Ha ha ha! Our bosses won't let us do that. Ha oh, ha that ha! What that means? I think that means kind of like in an arrogant kind of like uh, we're beneath that kind of way. You guys are funny. Nobody takes you guys seriously, type of thing. But I'm 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 inherently competitive like that. Two, I take all the fuck yous as big fuck yous. 36 Chambers with the Super Chat says, Redman is generally considered to be one of your favorite rappers' favorite rappers. Uh, we need to be giving more credit to artists that are looked at as legendary by their own contemporaries more often. Uh, speaking of which, and I think one of the big people who gives Redman the most respect will be Eminem. And I predict mm -hmm. that Eminem's probably going to crank the top five if not the top three on this billboard list so it's gonna be interesting to hear how the guy that you have at number three in his prime 
put Redman at number one in his top ten, and you have him at forty two. So, well, I, I I don't know if that's really like the barometer, but this no, is no, it's <laughs> never the barometer, but you know, it's interesting. No, it, it is. It makes for good fodder and good conversation and discourse. Like I understand what you're saying. I, I think the thing, I think the thing becomes too. It's one of those like comfort things, like 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 with the Kanye thing that we were talking about and placing him with the MCs. It's like, well, if that list reads like Jay Z, Tupac, Eminem, I'm gonna be like, Ugh. for a variety of reasons, but mostly him at three. You know because what? It's like it doesn't it doesn't add up. Like you can't <clears throat> you can't tell me. Like, even you know how people be like, it's not calculus. Well, let's say that it is calculus and you give me a formula and I put that formula in and that formula creates an answer. And you tell me that I have to put that answer in it's a, in a derivative to put it in an answer, which means you literally have to flip it and spin it again in order to get the correct answer. Even if you were to flip it and spin it, you feel me? <laughs> even if it was calculus. Hassan Sykes has a $20 super chat. We really appreciate the love. And I, he has something that I kind of want to expound upon based on our previous conversation the other day. He says, I recall you guys saying that Ye killed gangster rap. However, if you check the stats, Young Money actually killed it in 2010. Then uh, have they have three artists in the top five um, list in terms of sales. Okay. Well, this is my thing. And I think there was a couple of things that I saw Amen. Y'all were really giving it to me about last episode. And I just wanted to be fair for an artist of the magnitude of Kanye West that's had his hands pretty much everywhere on hip hop over the past 20 some odd years and give it a real discussion. Right. But one of the things that I saw was somebody saying, uh, I guess they were laughing when I said that Kanye opened the doors for Wayne. Now, obviously, Wayne, the hot boy was around 97 and, uh, you know, if we check the Wikipedias and stuff, clearly Wayne was around before Kanye even came around. But living that experience, Kanye West was the big rapper at that point while Wayne was kind of bubbling on the underground. I remember seeing Wayne out here in Atlanta at a hole in the wall club on the east side when the Carter 2 was out. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to catch nobody like Kanye West or 50 Cent in that era in these spots, Wayne was still kind of bubbling. Now, Wayne getting on graduation was a big deal for Wayne. And when you look at the Carter Three, who's all over that? Kanye West is all over that. That was a big deal at the time that Kanye was actually extending his hand to work with uh, Wayne at that point. That was Wayne's introdu introduction to mainstream superstardom. Because I remember even when the Carter Two was out. And MTV was interviewing 50 Cent. We're going to talk about him later on, too. Love 50. He was like, y'all say, he said, y'all say Wayne's the hottest MC in the game, but what was the first single of his last album? That was the narrative. He was a mixtape guy. And the guys who were the really big dogs out here, it was Kanye and 50 at the time. Jay was retired, right? On a mainstream level. T.I. was doing his thing, too. And at that time, on a mainstream level, T.I. was bigger than Wayne. But Kanye's involvement in the Carter Three was a big deal. Wayne being the only rap appearance on an album that sold a million in a week with graduation was a big deal. So obviously, not saying that Kanye had anything to do with Wayne signing the cash money, but obviously he had a lot to do with Wayne breaking into the mainstream in the way that he did and other people outside of just us hip-hop heads knowing what Wayne was doing on the mixtape circuit. You know what I mean? I think it was one of those things. You see, here is what, 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 what happened to Wayne that's like very, very rare that he crawled back out of and Kanye and graduation do have something to do with that. Well, it's not like people didn't know who Wayne was. He did. Yeah. He, he literally is the voice of Bling Bling and the most popular part of Back That Ass Up. Those albums and those songs, multi, 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 platinum. And classics, so yeah. So, so millions of people know who Wayne is. But one of those things about music is, is that when you apex, even if you apex within a group, the public doesn't allow you to apex again. And so what graduation really did for Wayne was allowed him to apex again. Yeah. And he actually was able to recreate himself. 
That's what I mean. Like yeah. he was able to apex again. But the people have to give you a chance and do that. And Wayne was young enough and dope enough and was making the dope enough records that it's like, it's like, oh no, no, this is grown up Wayne, the solo artist. Like he's a star. The only like, thing oh, I the only I didn't thing, know. Yeah. My bad. The only thing I can correlate it to off the top of my head, and again, I'm not comparing Wayne to Michael Jackson. But how a lot of people feel like Off the Wall is Michael Jackson's first album. It's his fifth album. You know what I mean? But people right. don't count the young Michael Jackson. Like, we right. don't really count the Hot Boys Wayne like that. This is a right. whole new artist. Right. That's why when we had <laughs> Wayne so high, I was, like, trying to remind people. It's like, yo, do you understand? Wayne, like, had a deal since he's, like, 13. It's been, like, like... People look at Guerrilla Warfare, Mike, and you know this. Guerrilla Warfare is really just the, uh, the the original Hot Boys album redone with some new beats and, like, you know, right. like about six new tracks. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, they've been they've been doing this. Like, Bling Bling came out when we was in high school, Mike. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. He, like, how about this? You want to talk about, like, 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 the block is hot, Mike. Like, I, the actual album, the block is hot. Yeah. The block is hot's a dope record with Juvie and BG on the hook. And that shit's kind of down the line, like, because that's after you get, like you said, Gorilla for, for, nah, Gorilla Warfare, Get It How You Live, How You Love That, 400 Degrees, Soldier Rag, you got uh, all the stuff that BG Chopper was doing, Chopper City, City, City in the Ghetto, yeah, like, so, yeah. The Block Is Hot was last, you know what I mean? Block the is only... Hot is like eight or nine albums <laughs> in right. Cash Money's repertoire, yeah, that's right. what I mean. Jay Wild with the Super Chat says, where's Nas on this list? I don't believe Nas is going to crank the top five on Billboard's list. I don't. I, you know what? They might even be disrespectful enough to have him outside of the top ten. Now I'm, I'm trying to think of what to see where... I'm trying to think of what MCs you could put ahead of him outside of the top ten. I mean, if he was outside of the top ten, go ahead. I'm well, sorry. You got, well, you got to look at the guys who sold more, so or who who I guess were going. I don't know. Like, did Ice Cube sell more than Nas? I don't know. It's a good question. I think that... What about Snoop? I'm interested to see where they put Snoop. I think where they put Snoop is going to say a lot. I agree with that. I think that they're going to put Tupac, Biggie, Jay-Z, Eminem, mm -hmm. and um, man, they might have Nas at that five spot. Or they could possibly put Kendrick above Nas. I could see that even happen. I think he'll be in the top ten, Mike. I think just to... If, <clears throat> A top ten list without him on any sort of hip hop level at this point is is egregious on like any level that you kind of want to speak on. Like ten, egregious. like you got ten guys better than Nas. But like, the hate real. that they have for Nas is just so next level. I wouldn't be surprised. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> how about this? You know, we haven't had to pull up in a while because people have been behaving themselves and acting accordingly <laughs> like they should. They know the people will turn up on them real, real quick. For the bullshit. But, but it's a new year. It but is I don't a have year. a new attitude. <laughs> Hassan Sykes you know? with the Super Chat says, uh, when Ye came out with Graduation, there still was uh, gangster rappers in the top five until 2010. After 2010, you can't find a gangster rap album in the top five. Well, you know, change doesn't happen. And, you know, Barack Obama says this. Change doesn't happen immediately, right? <laughs> But we can all say that that 50 Cent and, um, and Kanye West matchup was the start of not only that individual surpassing the biggest quote-unquote gangster rapper of its time, but the artists that were getting signed to majors like the J. Coles, the Kendricks, the Drakes even, were getting opportunities because labels were seeing this can actually sell over gangster rap. So it might not just be like a, a light that happens just, you know, immediately, but the ball started rolling with graduation and the people that we were seeing that were offsprings of Kanye started to get in those positions and take those spots as well. No, definitely. The impact is there. Yeah. And, and, and you're, you're, it's a good analogy about like, you know, I guess, you know, like the uh, steamroll snowball. Yeah. Like effect of it all. I mean, Mike, I know it's real when you out here quoting Obama, which yes. you don't be doing out here. You don't be quoting Obama. <laughs> hey man, when you're right, you're right. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. Mad Max with the super chat says, and yay, uh have Wayne too high for, and y'all have Wayne too high for me. 
If rappers keep coming out with music and it's not all that good, they lose points. Wayne's last great project was 2011, 2012. Got to factor that in. Hold on. We have Kanye and Jay High, and he actually was around before both of them. So how can you say that? And Jay their last really... Their last great projects were around that time, too. This is true. I think the thing is, man, like when it comes same, to longevity, I've seen it happen to LL and their names seem to always come up when we talk about longevity, but I've seen it happen to them where it's almost like in KRS too, to a degree, they get punished for staying around long enough. You know what I mean? Like, but we, we sit really there and the award, the we award the people who don't go to work. We award the people who might not even have a full solo album. Hell, a full solo song. See, and that's somehow, what I mean. How about this? The people, and somehow, the people because that, you never heard a bad verse from them, they're hired. Hold on. How about this? Like, people be like, <laughs> Wayne ain't top 20, but Andre 3000's top five. Right. It's like, how? How? <laughs> like, Wayne has, had, Wayne has had, like, 90 day stretches. I'm not joking. Wayne has had 90 <laughs> day stretches on the mic. Where he's literally recorded more than three thousand has his whole career. Ninety day stretches. Yeah, it's true. Three months. That's three months, people. Ninety day stretches. I think that his bar work on features alone might outnumber Andre's whole bar work throughout his whole career. And I, I'm I'm not being funny or coming down on three thousand. No, I'm, I'm just being sort of real. Dish. Like. No, I'm not saying this in jest. We're not. I think sometimes because like we're having a good time and it's entertaining and people think that it's like we're just saying stuff for shock value and entertainment. It's like, no, we're not saying this with any sort of jest whatsoever. Wayne really has had stretches that have outstretched some people's career who people hold high, whether it's for better or for worse. Like a lot of flag I got on my list was about Big L and Big Pun. And I'm like, okay, you're having a vacuum conversation. Exactly. More of a lyricist conversation then you are having the totality of what an MC is conversation. You're right. I can't put, like, <clears throat> truth, truthfully, as far as, like, that slick witty talk is concerned, I preferred L over J while L and J were still both alive. Yeah. And you know what L I'm saying? L just doesn't have enough, you know? It's not enough. I can't be walking around telling people it's like, yeah, yeah, but L's better than J. It's like, I can't say that. It's Even like if, if all we got from J was Reasonable Doubt, which is still his best piece of work, in my opinion. That's if still that's better all than, we than... got from him, we couldn't say he's top three. No, would, and even with that mean? being like, said, as much as I preferred L, like, has that slick talking, like, witty, like, lyricist, like, Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous is not Reasonable Doubt. No Even though they got the same mic rating. Nowhere near it. Um, Chris, and I say that respectfully because it ain't no. It is respectfully because Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous is a dope ass rap album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like With it, doesn't have, it, it doesn't have the evils on it. It doesn't have dead precedents on it. It doesn't have Can I Live on it. It doesn't ha even have a Can't Knock the Hustle in my opinion. I don't know. Put it on an MVP. I like put it on an MVP, but it's not Can't Knock the Hustle. Yeah, no, I feel you. Yeah, I feel you. Um, Christopher Hogan with the Super Chat says, Mixtape Wayne started his mainstream and features. It did, but again, you need to close the deal. How many mixtape rappers did we have in that era? How many... Mi and, and I say this respectfully, like, we, we always be like, yo, man, Saigon was killing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was a lot of mixtape rappers that didn't just get over that hump. You got to get over that hump. We can't sit here and act like the hump doesn't matter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Hyson Sykes with the Super Chat says, y'all also said Ye was the first regular person turned rapper to go number one. But truthfully, Nelly was the first one um, out of the modern rappers. Nelly went He's down. trying to tell you. Listen, man, you know, you know me. He's trying to tell you Nelly's not regular, first of all. First of all, Nelly, like part of why you're seeing him in a baseball jersey and in a baseball field is because he was an actual like prospect. And so he's an athlete, but he was also like like had some street ties too. So no, he wasn't a regular dude. He was an athlete and a street dude. Well, I love Nelly, and I think that what Nelly has done or what Nelly did in that period actually hasn't been done again, right? You got somebody coming from a city that never had a mainstream rapper come out of ever. And people didn't even know at the time that there were rappers coming out of St. Louis. He came out of there with zero cosigns. The features on that album are Wayne and Rashida. 
and you come out the gate doing ten million. He ain't okay, had no so doctor during the whole really time. Cool. Huh? Go ahead. It wasn't really ten. He really did six to seven out the gate. It accumulated to ten within a two or three year period. But that Still first, but, but but I believe that first year, by the time that first year it ended, it was like five heading on six million, and then into the next year. Because I think it, because if I'm not mistaken, Country Grammar dropped in like April. And saying all that to say, you know, I think but, but, that. But Mike, not to take anything away, I just want to clarify and document it correctly. Oh yeah. Like when it actually happened, it was like five, six, or seven million within the year, and then matriculated over the next couple of years to the diamond status that it now that now claims. But even around then, doing this is a phenomenal feat. Go ahead. This is what I want to say about Nelly in contrast or comparison to Kanye West, and what I mean about Kanye West being like that regular dude in the main with mainstream success. From a content standpoint, they weren't talking about the same things. Even though Nelly kind of had like a singy song type of delivery, he was still talking about street shit. Right. He was. Same like, street you know what I'm saying? Baby, like, ready he, to let it go. Exactly. So like it might have sounded good to the crossover ear, but from a content standpoint, he wasn't making songs like All Falls Down. He wasn't making songs like Family Business or Jesus Walks from a content standpoint. So I don't I think that comparison's kind of off. I still think that really, if somebody wanted to be technical and you print the lyrics off the page, somebody at Fox News could label Nelly a gangster rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't get the correlation there. I think that you're kind of going off of how it sounded and how many um different outlets that don't really play hip hop embraced what he was doing. But yeah, I mean listen you know, to well, you know what I heard country really grammar. um you know what I heard when I heard country grammar? It's like I heard somebody that was pulling off the um the single side of life after death. Like mm. was definitely inspired by the singles on Life After Death because no 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 the street talk is actually there but it's so carefully guised in uh melodies and hymns and sing songy like bar patterns and styles and and catchy phrases that really you know make it you divert your attention to when somebody you know comes on on a verse saying shit like street sweeper let it go or i know you sick of this you know this name incredible. brand nigga with those girls say he's sweet like liquor it's like this so nigga talking this. like this on a record ain't nobody ain't nobody paying to come through have sex on runs this persian come up to your job hit you you know what i mean when you start talking like that on singles you know what i'm saying and you can kind of guise what you're saying because it sounds so good to the ear right you nice you nice right you nice with it mm -hmm. hassan sykes with the super chat says sorry i had to get those statements off my chest love y'all love you too appreciate the love and yeah anybody else who has anything off they want to get anything off their chest no. on the previous episode we here to talk about it 36 chambers nobody says, Kendrick on about second, to be Mike. on this list. Go ahead. Um, just a couple people are in the chat. No, no, no. Nelly doesn't have like a classic, which you'd say hip hop quotable verse, but that doesn't take away from the moment oh, the or moment the band big. or the songs. I love Mike. I love Ei. It's incredible. Ei is my shit. I mean, it's a I classic. love I love the remix to Ei Tip Drill, and I think we all love that record. <laughs> incredible record. Video. 36 chambers. You hey, you want to know what's crazy? I know some, I knew some of the girls from that video. I seen them in Strokers back in the day. Yeah, I didn't know them personally, but... I knew a couple of them personally. <laughs> Great times. 36 Chamber says, Kendrick about to be on the list as the greatest of all time with the award buzz for Mr. Morale and the Mid-Steppers. Is that the award... I'm sorry, but the buzz that the Mr. Morale and the Mid-Steppers is getting. I agree with that. I think that... It's all leading into the Grammys, right? Because they're doing their, um, so they're doing their fifty best rappers, greatest rappers, because of you know fifty years of hip hop. And shout out hip hop turning fifty this year. We'll get our fifty list together. We got we at like thirty right now, but and we haven't worked that out yet. Yeah, yeah. I like we're, how, we're I like how they have this down while we're still like working it all out, and we kind of started, you know, at least you know, well, you know, if you're not first, you're last. Well, they're releasing 10 at a time, so maybe they're quote-unquote still working on it. But I think that it, it seems like they might be doing 10 a week. Or, you know, I'm sure some people that work for Vibe or uh, Billboard are probably in the room right now. But, you know, let us know. Anyway, 
I think that they're doing like maybe 10 a week. And when you calculate that, it's kind of leading up to the Grammy. So I could see Kendrick being very high just based on this Grammy buzz with uh, Mr. Morale. Because they all work together. I would be surprised if he wasn't in their top 15. But I don't... Even Bill, I mean, I'm not I'm not privy to this, but how many albums has Kendrick like sold? I'm not sure. I'm not really privy. He does pretty well, but I don't know off the top of my head. And okay. then you know what? We gotta also factor in Drake in the like, situation, right? The, because this is Billboard we're talking about. Drake uh, got all Drake, kind oh, of sure. Billboard records. <laughs> you said you said Billboard and Bob? <laughs> yeah. Drake's gonna be high. High as hell. High. Uh, Nicholas with the super chat says, oh, wow, then I can get the sky. <laughs> right. up, up to the sky." <laughs> yeah, he gonna be hot. Uh, Nicholas with the super right. chat says, uh, "What y'all think about Ghostface releasing a new album on Stream Player? Huh? On Stem Players? I'm sorry. I like isn't, it. Isn't he, that what? Isn't, didn't Kanye do like that for an album? He did. Is it gonna be with Kanye or something? I'm not up on this news. Huh?" If Kanye, what if Kanye quote unquote produced a ghost album and put it on the on the Ye Stem player? Hmm. Be interesting. But you know what? This is what Do I'll you say. have access to the stem player, Mike? Can we get access I to I have it, but this is what I'm gonna say, Coop. I'd rather they do that than make one Wu Tang album and sell it to one person in an auction. I believe there was only one person responsible for that, Mike, but I'm gonna say less. <laughs> Ultimately, yes, I agree with you 100%. 36 Chambers with the Super Chat says, if we are uh, deducting points for subpar projects recently, where does Jay-Z fit on that list now? That's the conversation. I told you, see, when you started this Kanye thing, it really became a J thing. (laughs) That's the conversation. If we are lowering Wayne now, it's true. We can't pick and choose. We got to kind of be across the board with this. And Speaking of that, you know, people think I'm picking and choosing when it comes to Kanye West and Eminem. Um, And when I brought up the whole numbers and hits conversation, uh, maybe that was, maybe I should have set that conversation up a little better in the previous episode. But let's be honest, guys. Let's be completely honest. We got Eminem songs out there that are like, 10 times platinum that none of us have even heard of. So it's it, it's not the same thing. The na- the songs that I was naming, everybody's privy to. These are songs that people either play all the time or played all the time when they were around. You know, and, Mike, and when so, I said EI was my jam, people went in the chat and started listening listing list, list their Nelly jams because <clears throat> to be a hip hop fan it's just like any other genre when you're a connoisseur. The songs from your legends, they just start rattling and rippling off, Mike. It's not some sort of thing where it's like, oh, well, you know, such and such soul, such and such. It's like, ain't none of, like, Mike, that's what I'm saying. It's like, when I said EI was my shit, people were like, no, hiding here was my shit. No, 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 ride with me was my shit. Forget that. I still love country grammar. Oh, I love this. Don't forget about the limo with Kelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what yeah, happens when you're a legend. Ain't no numbers conversation. It's like, do you remember how that record slapped? Do you remember how that shit slapped, son? I think over time, too, man, Ride With Me might have been the one that aged the best. And I know that Leroy Green was in our um, in our last episode's comment section saying, I hate that conversation about how songs age. But, I mean, it's a real conversation because, like you said, when E.I. dropped, it was my favorite. But now, we don't hear E.I. as much as we hear Ride With Me. Ride With Me is the record. And this is the thing. You could ask Nelly. If Nelly, if you ask Nelly, if we had Nelly here right now, it's like, look, what songs do you perform now in your sets that are like, you know, throwbacks that get people up the most? It's probably Ride With Me. Those are real you, things. You know what I mean? But, and the age of, about- yeah, the aging of a record has a lot to do with that. But now, now, now let's go to this. People got on Nelly, and I was one of them, and admittedly so, about the sing-songy melody and flow just of that album in general. I felt like it was just too much of it. But here's the reality of the matter. When you play Ride With Me, part of why Ride With Me lasts so long is because Ride With Me plays like a hip-hop kind of country folk blues 
kind of record. It kind of has a feel that kind of transcends this genre a right. little bit. It's a little bit of one of our genre b- uh, blending moments where we ascend that we really don't talk about. I agree with you. I agree yes. with you. Uh, Mad Max with the Super Chat, and I'm going to get back to what I was saying. Like, about- think about this. Like, uh, somebody like a Garth Brooks or a Travis Tritt or even a Carrie Underwood, yeah. they could have sung the same song and made it a country song, and it would have went diamond. I'm sure they were playing that song at the hoedowns too. You know what I'm saying? Like that's. I would not mind going to see my brother in Nashville pulling up on Broadway and doing a little motherfucking do si do to ride with me. No, <laughs> I don't mind. I'm gonna get back to what I was saying in correlation to the Eminem and Kanye thing that people had an issue with. But let me get to the super chats real quick. Mad Max says MJ on the Wizards has opened up the door for LeBron versus uh, Michael. Uh, Kobe versus MJ de- uh, debate. If MJ never extended his career, he'd be the undisputed. But like I said, with staying around too long uh, with Wayne, it lowers your stock. Huh. I want to say this and put this in context too because actually a friend of mine and I were talking about this today. People do understand that the reason why Michael Jordan went and played for the Wizards is because you know he was pro- promised uh, ownership. And he went out there to raise the stock of that organization that he was supposed to be owning, but they reneged on him. And, you know, thankfully for Bob Johnson and BET creating his own team from scratch, Michael Jordan's the only black owner in all of sports. Um, I think reneged is a very nice word. I believe the uh, appropriate words are used and lied to Michael Jordan. All because. Right. We got to ask ourselves, what are the two reasons that Michael left Chicago when he did and retired? Jerry Reinsdorf wouldn't bring Phil Jackson back. Exactly. Ownership and coaching. You know, not, I don't even want to say coaching, but he didn't want to play under anything new, right? So why would he go to a team in the Washington Wizards that has no way of winning anything and you know who ended up being his coach in Washington? Doug Collins. The guy who was his coach when he won all those uh, scoring titles, defensive player of the year. If Chicago would have just said, you know what, Phil's out of here, but we bring Doug Collins back. He would have stayed. That is correct. He also wanted input on some of the decisions being made. Yeah. So, you know, the Jordan Wizard years, I don't think it lowered his stock. In any you know sense of the word, I think that people could see it in context. Now, maybe, maybe the wizard years need to be documented properly so people could have some context. It's not th- this guy who was the competitor that he was and was about winning is not going to sit here and go to no team that has no chance of winning just because he can't stay away from basketball. You know what I mean? That wasn't that wasn't what it was. He could have uh, went to more viable team and won. Exactly. Hassan Sykes with the Super Chat says, uh, you know it's real when I'm spending my hard-earned money with y'all. I appreciate the love, man. We appreciate everybody spending their hard-earned money. 